now we are discussing about features of the indian constitution it is the bulkiest constitutions of the world hmm? uh, the indian constitution is one of the bulkiest constitution in the world because uh, the constitution originally had 395 articles and eight schedules and now obviously increase because of amendments we are aware that uh, amending a constitution etc that is borrowed from some other uh, nations list but uh, total now we have the bulkiest constitution in the world now main factors that contributed to the bulk of that constitution that is number 1 uh, incorporation of good provisions of the constitutions of other countries to avoid future loopholes say if uh, i am working on making some design pamphlet brochure anything we are keenly observing each and everything but yet uh, we have noticed many time that after printing after finalizing after proof reading also minor mistakes are here and there they can visualize afterwards so in order to avoid this type of loopholes we discuss the constitution we compare constitution with various others uh, other nations constitution and uh, we incorporated various things just uh, in previous lecture only we discuss the things incorporated from other constitution now absence of separate constitution for the states and provision uh, of both central and state structure in the constitution this is the most important feature of indian constitution that we don't have separate constitution of state and separate a state means what uh, we have to consider uh, the whatever the states are there like uttar pradesh maharashtra like that so uh, that whereas central government and state government both are given in the same constitution obviously it is going to get bulky now uh, we borrowed various things from other constitution some like uh, fundamental rights fundamental duties directive principles of state policy and all that then uh, provision regarding peculiar system uh, problem that facing country say for example the problem of scheduled caste schedule tribes backward classes official languages all these thing to resolve that various things are adopted in indian constitution which are otherwise not part of other nations constitution need not be the part of other nations constitution but after all these provisions say you are uh, aware that yet we are not able to solve many problem of them just take example i am talking with you in english why i am talking with you in english if i am getting freedom from britain on 15th august 47 so we are not able to resolve the issue of official language and that's why in india english is considered as an official language and therefore i am communicating with you in english so this is the thing uh, but uh, issues are there constitution is there for that and we are not able to solve such simple issue of language yet inclusion of emergency provision in the constitution these are all borrowed from now uh, we uh, borrowed this from weimar constitution of germany and uh, interest of country and people then detailed provision regarding organization of judiciary the services election other transitory power all these things then codification of details regarding center state relation to prevent further conflicts say in many nation this type of conflicts are and were observed and therefore we have codified all these things and uh, to avoid such type of conflicts yet some conflicts are going on between center and state state and state because whatever the provisions you are going to make uh, this is something uh, leakage of water you may notice leakage of water at one place you are trying to make some uh, seal for that and then from other part it start leaking and like that so uh, it is never ending problem but uh, yet we are able to solve this to certain extent now uh, 
enumeration of certain practices which in other countries operate on the basis of conventions this is most important thing that certain things you are considering as convention but there are people in india some they are asking question aisa kitna constitution mein likha hai so like that for them everything is written okay this is written in constitution now check like that things are there but in other nations many things we are considering under convention so uh, for that purpose we have, our constitution is bulkiest now second important part that is combination uh, we are discussing again i am telling you we are discussing the important features uh, of indian constitution that combination of rigidity and flexibility both things are there so combination of rigidity and flexibility uh, the indian constitution is having combination of rigidity and flexibility uh, which is uh, not according to physics in physics a body can be rigid rigid means what never changing its shape whereas elastic undergoing change of shape so uh, a body can be rigid or elastic how we can say body is rigid as well as elastic this is something run of kachh that uh, having desert in summer season and marshy place in rainy season so like that things are there uh, in india we are having combination of rigidity and flexibility now why rigidity because uh, it is very difficult to amend indian constitution that's why we are saying the constitution is rigid what is elasticity then it is difficult but not impossible to amend indian constitution more than 90 amendments are carried out and so it is called as combination of rigidity and flexibility now parliamentary system of government so whatever we are going to discuss in future uh, and uh, in first basic lecture only we discuss this is something we are calling as parliamentary system of our government now uh, say for example if i am talking about that uh, by cameral legislature and all that just uh, let me clarify here so this is something i am showing you in form of venn diagram so this i can say about parliamentary system of government here i am writing here in india we are calling lower house as lok sabha upper house as rajya sabha whereas this is the president now uh, this is council members minister council of ministers uh, why i am showing like that so council of minister can be member of lok sabha council of minister can be member of rajya sabha or council of that uh, uh, minister uh, member of that council may be from outside is it possible that person who is not member of lok sabha or rajya sabha and can become uh, minister answer is yes what is the provision after electing or after that nominating as minister after that within 6 months that person should be member of either rajya sabha or lok sabha so till that period i have to show he is or she is outside uh, parliament uh, sorry outside this lok sabha and rajya sabha but yet that person is there in the parliament and so this is something parliamentary system of government now federal system with a unitary bias now you are observing something that uh, united states of america so initially they were states and they united so we are calling them as united states of america united kingdom so kingdoms were existing united forcefully or that that is different but united 
So same thing is here that we are talking about uh, India. The states were there and then they are going to unite or there was a kingdom entire and it is divided into federal system. So if you observe in Chandragupta Maurya's empire, that Mauryan period, at that time also a strong empire was formed first and then it was divided into provinces because uh, direct communication is required. Now today with electronic media and all that we have uh, ability to make direct communication but in old days it was not there and for direct communication say approximately district level that was considered as a kingdom and many kingdoms can be considered under single provincy. So this system was there at time of Chandragupta Maurya or even prior to that, that uh, Nanda dynasty or whatever earlier Magad empire, they were enforcing same system, somewhat similar system. Uh, during Mughal rule also same system was there that provinces were there and they were headed by a king. So like that uh, in India, uh, after Britishers, they are going to uh, transfer the power. After that, whatever the provinces were there, try to recollect in our earlier lecture, I have discussed that Britishers intentionally made provinces and uh, they were having intention to break down India into as many pieces as they can. And for that purpose, they made provinces. But now, because of strong man, that is Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel, we are able to unite the pieces into strong India. So in India, we have federal system that is uh, with unitary bias. Now fundamental rights, as I discussed in per, uh, earlier part that I am discussing now, that uh, from constitution of USA, we borrowed this thing, that uh, there is list of fundamental rights. Now state cannot make laws which take away any fundamental right of the citizen. Uh, if it does so, the courts can declare such law as unconstitutional. So, prime importance is given to fundamental rights. It may be noted that fundamental rights are granted by the constitution are not absolute. Okay, the constitution C to strike balance between individual liberty and social interest. Uh, when we are discussing these fundamental rights, at that time we are going to discuss uh, more in detail. But this is important character of Indian constitution that we have fundamental rights. And these fundamental rights are uh, not absolute one. What is the meaning of absolute one? If government want to take some right for social interest. There should be balance between social interest and uh, individual liberty. Like uh, what happened during this COVID uh, pandemic situation that everybody should be there at their home only. Nobody should come out. So like that, your some fundamental right is average. But that is for a while, not for permanent level. So like that, uh, fundamental rights are not absolute one. Fundamental duties, now as rights are there, duties must be there, so rights belong to USA, duties belong to USSR, so we borrowed about from them, so uh, fundamental duties, they contain list of 11 fundamental duties uh, for citizen, uh, 10 of these duties were added in constitution by 42nd amendment in 1976, so to the surprise, but till 1976 in Indian constitution, no such uh, fundamental duties were there. They borrowed afterward. The 11th duty was added by 86th Constitutional Amendment Act, that is of 2002. So these are fundamental duties that should be carried out by citizens. Now, uh, directive principles of state policy. Now, this is something like uh, we are saying self-instruction. I have to wake up early morning tomorrow. So like that I am instructing myself. Like that things are there that we are calling as directive principles. These principles seek to provide social and economic basis for democracy and the establishment of welfare of state. 
we are discussing this in detail. A uh, fantastic uh, directive principles are there. Some strange things I come to know when I was learning about this directive principle. And uh, these directive principles are very nice. A uh, secular state. The constitution makes India a secular state. Many people are having this type of argumentation that at 1947, uh, on 15th August 1947, Pakistan was given to Muslim people. Then the remaining must be for Hindus. In the world, there is no separate nation for Hindus. For Muslims, more than 50 nations are there. For Christians, many nations are there. But for Hindus, there is no single nation in the world. So India should be declared as Hindu state. But uh, our founder, member of this nation, they were sticking to their principle of secularism and they declared that India should be considered as a secular state. Some of the scholars in India, they were not ready to accept this as a secular state. Uh, out of that, one scholar was saying that if you accept the word as secular, then the obvious thing is that there is no word that is minority will be there. In order to get minority, there must be some religious state. Then only we can say there is minority. But anyway, uh, we declared their state as India as a secular state. We detach from religious part. Whatever uh, secular state means, don't follow any religion. No, you have to follow your religion. But government is nothing to do with your religion. So like that, things are there about secular state. Independent judiciary. So something, uh, there was a great person that is Lord Montesquieu, uh, sorry, uh, Montesquieu, he was from France. Before French Revolution, he was propagating this way that law making authority, judiciary system and executive system should be separate. So in India, our judiciary is independent. Considering, uh, constitution provides independent judiciary which ensures that government is carried on in accordance with provisions of the constitution. So, uh, that is the most important thing, that judiciary system is not dominated by government part. People as a source of authority, as we discussed, that from where we borrowed this power, so from people of India only. And like that we say that the constitution draws its authority from the people and has been uh, in the name of people. Now, universal adult franchising. If we are, uh, so many things are there, we don't have value if anything is getting in free of cost. Best example, oxygen. As long as we are getting it from air, we don't have value of that. But the moment you have to use oxygen cylinder and mask, then you will realize what is the costly thing we are getting in. So same thing, what adult franchisee, now in India, a person, the Indian citizen, completed age of 18, is able to vote. That is, we are saying adult franchisee. But it was not situation in old days. So during British rule, or rather I should say in Britain also, say women were having no right for voting. Only certain property taxpayers, they were entitled for voting process. But in that, no rights were there for women for uh, this uh, voting. So in India, uh, everybody have special uh, provision this, that everybody is having right of vote. But very unfortunate to say, check out whatever the things in previous years. Uh, voting, previous voting, hardly 50% voting is there. So that's why I'm saying that if anything is we are getting free of cost, we don't have value of that. Now, uh, another feature that is emergency power, uh, constitution waste extraordinary power in a precedent during emergencies arising out of armed rebellion or external aggression arising out of uh, this then emergency due to the breakdown of constitutional machinery in the state or financial emergency when credit of the country is threatened. 
Now, uh, we can say these all uh, emergency situations are there uh, where democratic rule is not useful. For that purpose, some dictatorship nature that is required and then a uh, president in this particular situation, president is taking all powers in their hand, certain uh, fundamental rights, fundamental duties may alter at that time. Now, uh, if you observe particular situation in Afghanistan, when Talibanis take over the government, at that time you can observe the situation closely that it was armed rebellion and uh, the president left, actually at that time president left Afghanistan, whereas vice president was there and you are aware that if president is not there in nation, then all powers they are vested in hands of vice president. And accordingly, vice president was claiming that Afghanistan is not under uh, Taliban's complete control. Uh, he was there in the Panjashir territory of Afghanistan at that time. But uh, to execute the power, there must be a machinery, but that machinery was broke down. So under this case, there is provision that person can, uh, uh, that uh, parliament or uh, rather than that uh, council, they decide to declare emergency. But emergency is not always throughout the nation. State level emergency is also there because no constitutional machinery is there. Say for example, uh, in uh, 2019, in Maharashtra, the situation was that that none of the party was claiming that they wanted to form government. So after the declaration of result, within 13 days, there should be formation of new government, but no such thing happened. And then it was presidential rule in Maharashtra that is called as uh, state level emergency. So when such thing, okay, we are going to discuss in emergency power afterward, but what is emergency power? Here, uh, under name of these features of constitution, we are just revising whatever we borrowed from that uh, earlier part, that whatever things borrowed, there also we were just discussing, these all things we have to discuss in detailed constitution, single citizenship, as I have explained, that uh, single citizenship means a person from Maharashtra is uh, capable of moving everywhere in India, it is not that um, if that person is visiting out Bihar, then he must take visa or may make some formalities. No, a person from any part of India, if that person is Indian citizen, can travel any state in India. Uh, restricted areas are obviously restricted for him. I can't say that I want to go to BRC because I'm Indian citizen. I can travel anywhere in BRC. So no. So certain rights are there. Uh, that is uh, under single citizenship. There is no separate citizenship of different states. So citizenship is there only Indian citizen. If you have driving license, then that driving license is valid throughout the India. It is not that I am getting driving license from Maharashtra. Then in, uh, suppose I want to visit Gujarat, then I have to take separate license or I have to apply for that. No. So like that things are there. Then by cameral legislature. So whatever is here in this structure is there, this is called as bicameral legislature. Uh, Lok Sabha, direct representative of people, they are there in Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, upper house of the parliament, state representatives are there and apart from state representative, people from uh, various fields like art, sports, they are also nominated there. This, so this is called as bicameral legislature. Now special provisions for minorities, the constitution makes special provisions for minorities, uh, scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, it is not only reserved seats for them in the parliament and state legislature, but also grants them certain special rights and privileges. So these all things are there so that everybody should get uh, the importance of inclusive growth. Everybody should grow according to time and we should have all equal level. So that is mean for equality. Now Panchayati Raj. So before arrival of Britishers, 
say if you are going through the history of india you will find that whatsoever the rulers may be greeks invaded in india scythians that is shod yuchi huns whatever kush darat parthar abir invaders list is tremendous then all muslim invaders and local rulers also whatever the local rulers but indian system remains same that is carried out through village as a basic unit and from village the system was completely remaining same to same but the british raj or rather i should say the company raj initially and then british raj changed out this system to very very great extent as a result there was collapse of this type of machinery gandhi ji wanted to re establish this all so these principles we are considering under panchayati raj constitution provides a so constitutional basis to panchayati raj uh, institution as well as urban and local bodies that is a uh, mahanagar palika we are saying municipal corporation and all that so for that purpose these things are uh, there the power is real power is vested in hands of these all groups then rule of law as we borrowed it from britain that rule of law everybody uh, we have to consider we have to obey the rule nobody is above the rule now uh, there are basically three postulates of rule of law number 1 no person can be punished except for the break of an existing law this is most important second all citizens are equal before law and no one is above the law the third the constitution is the supreme law of the land and all laws passed by the parliament must be keeping with the provisions of the constitution so on that basis we are saying it is rule of law now um, uh, strikes balance between constitutional supremacy and parliamentary sovereignty so whenever uh, we are aware that parliament is no doubt sovereign there is no about the parliament nobody is there to guide us but constitution is uh, made in such a way that supreme court is there they can have complete watch over the parliamentary access whatever the laws passed by parliament they must be constitutional if anything is going against constitution then parliament is having uh, sorry this a uh, supreme court can declare these laws as unconstitutional so this is the way supreme court is having check over constitution and parliament whereas parliament is having right to amend the law because supreme court is there to judge according to the existing law the laws are passed by parliament and like that things are there both can check each other so this is most important thing then single integrated judiciary so state laws are separate and national level laws are separate it is true say for example in gujarat person can't drink liquor common man is not a civilian is not supposed to drink liquor whereas in maharashtra person can consume liquor but not in the public place whereas certain states are there they don't have restriction over consuming liquor so like that laws may be differ a person is there in xyz state where uh, there is no ban on liquor whereas person is now there in maharashtra where in public place liquor consumption is not allowed by law and third thing a person is there in gujarat where no liquor is allowed for civilian if that is the situation then laws are different so uh, but the judiciary system is same under supreme court that is at central level high courts for state level and orders are accordingly so there is a single integrated judiciary then provision of independent bodies for example election commission is an independent body its role is to carry out elections for parliament state legislature 
for the post of president and vice president comptroller and auditor general of india that we are saying cam so comptroller and auditor general of uh, india which audits account of central and state government and acts as a guardian of public money third public service commission for both at center as well as state level that what exam we are intended that is upsc that is union public service commission that is of central government and state public commission for example we are there in maharashtra then maharashtra public service commission that is mpsc so like that uh, the establishment they are also advise the president and governor on disciplinary matters now this way we have provision for independent bodies last little bit contradictory part but yes it is basic structure of the constitution the basic concept is a judge made principle but now a feature of constitution that certain features of constitution are beyond amending powers of parliament uh, in previous point we discussed that parliament can amend constitution and according to existing law judge should give review but here certain portion of the constitution cannot be amended by government uh, by parliament constitution are beyond the amending powers certain features are beyond amending powers of parliament uh, various verdicts are there according to that uh, it is clear that all laws and constitutional amendments which transgress uh, the basic structure are liable to struck down for example basic features they are not very very clear but they are given that uh, basic form of government secularism federal character sovereignty of country parliamentary democracy fundamental rights directive principles etc they are considered in basic part of constitution and we are not able to amend that part of constitution okay so these are something we are discussing about uh, features of indian constitution now this is end of lecture one more important uh, suggestion is there that we are making some change in the our lecture pattern so uh, certain questions we are going to post lecture wise so observe that videos also that after ending of this uh, particular lecture we have to go through certain question paper a uh, question set a separate video will be there and uh, you have to get answers of that also and if you are able to score more than 50% mark then observe next video otherwise honestly go through previous video once again and get more than 50% mark so like that features we are going to add shortly we'll get whatever the lecture numbers are there for each and every lecture we are going to ask you questions uh, within short thanks for observing this video